You know what I'm tired of? People judging people. So don't do it. Just don't do it. Stop it. <laughs> I'm not crazy like that, but seriously. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching God's Grace on Tuesday. Whew, this one's heavy. Here we go. As I said before, don't do it. Don't judge. Okay, why? Well, Jesus says, do not judge lest you be judged for judging. <laughs> don't be a hypocrite because, you know, in the scene from, from the Gospels when Jesus is down on his knees in the dirt with the woman caught in the act of, the, of adultery, here's a moment where Jesus could have rightfully said it's okay to kill her because according to the law of Moses, it was okay to kill her. Okay? She was an adulteress. But here's the thing. What does he do? The one who could say that uh, the one without sin, Jesus says, those of you who are without sin, cast the first stone. Jesus could have picked up a rock and hit her over the head with it. But what does he do? He does the legal thing. Because back then, a man with the presence of two witnesses would accuse and convict a woman of adultery, and then she would be stoned to death. So Jesus, when all of them have left, looks around and says, where are your accusers? Has anyone here accused you? She says, no one has. So officially, she's off the hook. And Jesus says, well, then neither do I. I do not condemn you. He says, go and sin no more. Here's the important part of that story. Jesus recognizes the sin. He recognizes the evil. And he says, enough. Do not do that again. But notice how he doesn't define her by that sin. You and I are guilty of this all the time. All the time. We look at people who have done evil and we identify them with the evil. And we do not see a human being in need of salvation. We see a demon, an agent of darkness, someone to be crushed and disposed of. This is not of God. It's that simple. It's just not. Now, if a person rejects the love of God and rejects forgiveness, they will get what they asked for, not God, which is by definition, H-E double hockey sticks, hell. But our hope should not be that someone who has done evil goes to hell. Our hope should be that a person who has done evil has sinned will be forgiven. Why do we hope that? Because you and I have sinned. All have fallen short of the glory of God. So if you're on a high horse and you think that, oh, this person because they've sinned or that person because they're into this, they're so dark and evil. They're just the devil. They're not the devil. The devil is a real created being who is evil. <laughs> like, and, here's, and again, people can do evil. People can worship evil. People can be entertained by evil. Just turn on the TV or the computer and you'll see what I'm talking about. But it's important to note that those people, if they're still breathing, that is a person who was made to be a saint. That is a person who is in need of love. That is a person who is in need of care, not condemnation. That will come from God later if they don't repent, but they need the opportunity. And before they're going to have the opportunity to repent, they're going to want to know why on earth should they do that? Because the Christians are the most judgmental individuals ever. Why would I want to be one of them? I hear that often from my youth, especially the new ones when they first start coming. I had one person one time tell me that they came to my youth group just to make sure and to validate all the things that they'd heard about the Catholic Church were true. That we were judgmental, arrogant, and hate-filled people. And this person told me that they were very upset after the first time we interacted. And they said, Tim, I came here to be judged by you. And yet you and I disagree on just about everything. And yet I feel loved by you. It was the greatest compliment I've ever received in my life. Because that is how people reacted to Jesus. They didn't know what to do with him. I wish that every time I interacted with someone, that was the response. Unfortunately, it's not, and I need to be forgiven for those things. So if you're a person out there who's waving their finger around, telling all the people who aren't followers of Jesus all the rules that the followers of Jesus are supposed to follow, stop it. Enter into relationship with that person. 
Offer them life, offer them hope, offer them healing. And all that stuff will be taken care of by Jesus, who is the judge. A merciful judge. The one who actually can judge shows mercy. And if that's the case, if that's who we are supposed to be like, you and I can show mercy. And the stakes are high because if we don't do that, if we are unwilling to forgive, we give God permission every time we pray the Our Father to then not forgive us for our sins. Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If you don't show mercy, you will not be shown mercy. If you can't pick up your cross and follow after Jesus, Jesus is clear. He doesn't say, oh, you'll be kind of, eh, you're an okay disciple or follower of Jesus. No, he says, if you can't pick up your cross daily and come after me, you cannot be my disciple. I know that this is heavy stuff, but I'm looking at our broken world. I'm like, this is what we need to hear. So there it is. This is a message of hope and of love. Stop being a person. When other people walk in the room, it is filled with darkness. Be light. Be joy. Come against the darkness. And together, we'll make a huge difference. Thank you all so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't yet, be sure to check out my wife Katie's blog, God's Grace, on Thursday. You can find that uh, in the link in the description in the comments. Um, yeah, also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, and click the little circle thingy. Uh, and you can follow the God's Grace on Tuesday YouTube channel. And yeah, share these videos with your friends. Together we'll bring the whole world to Jesus Christ. Until next week, peace of Jesus to you. God bless you.